Hey, hey, hey. Tive had an out of this world episode from our space. Is the seven year itch actually a real thing? Being with another person for an entire lifetime is no joke, people. But what compels someone to actually scratch that itch? We find that out today on our space. Cheated on days after wedding and seven years into the relationship. I just found out a few days ago that my recently made wife had cheated on me multiple times with her coworker. It's really hard because we just got married after being together seven years and postponing our wedding out of 2020 due to COVID. And finally, we did it last month. But she'd been talking to and meeting up with this guy behind my back for weeks and months, and it's just all so fresh and new. We both had concerned about our relationship for months and years now, different priorities, etc. But I can't help to think that she simply gave up on us and went and did this because she wasn't confident in her relationship and therefore had no moral conscience, so to speak. I do know she liked this guy too, even though she tells me it was nothing. Who knows for sure how deep the connection goes. Anyway, referring to our previous concerns, I'm thinking that the best thing to do for myself would be to go ahead and begin filing for divorce and move on with my life. It's the only way I can protect myself from this in the future. And I will be forever scarred by the imaginations of those two being together. One of the biggest things I have asked for in this situation is accountability. She made the mess. She needs to clean it up. However, she still does not prioritize me and our relationship, going about her business largely the same as before. We have talked, and she tells me that she doesn't know how I can forgive her, and I am starting to think this was a self-fulfilling prophecy for her. Cheat, sever ties, move on. I would have been okay with the truth, but why does she have to hurt me to get there? Suck that it had to come to this. Wish we could have called off the wedding if I had known. I only know because I admittedly snooped, but otherwise believe this would have continued behind my back, and I don't think she really regrets the behavior. More so now, she sees how she hurt me and feels bad. I wish she had a backbone and did the right thing in the first place and prioritized me. Even just being more direct with her concerns and taking preemptive action would have stung a little at the time, but could have prevented a mountain of heartbreak. Yes, the timing was pretty terrible, but I suppose there is never a right time. Thankfully, we do not have kids. We are 29 and 30 years old, and kids were actually one major thing we semi-disagreed over. I was open to begin trying soon and starting a family. It is important to me. She does want to have kids eventually. So she has told me, but wants to keep living her life and not being tied down and such right now. So, that was one disconnect we had among others, another being which state to live in long term, our current location, or back near family, etc. But as we were approaching the wedding, I tried to be a grown and mature person, feudal optimism apparently, that we could work things out and have a great future together, all while knowing a 50% chance of divorce down the line if we couldn't work things out. However, for her to do this deed and leave me hurt and bruised now forever, rather than just tell me what was going on in her life and be a grown-up about it, makes me very frustrated. I want to make it clear that she did not come to me with this information. I did snoop and saw text messages, and apparently she had been confiding in friends, co-workers all along the way too, which makes me feel some type of way about them. But anyway, I had to confront her, which I did immediately, and I gave her the opportunity to come clean about any shady stuff going on but she did not respond right away. Finally, when I said I knew she had relations, she confessed and explained. Even then, she told me it was only one time, while I was out of town last weekend at a close friend's wedding without her. But in further conversations, I got her to admit that it has happened multiple times. She says twice. Who knows? Doesn't matter. After snooping a little more, not proud, but I feel like I had to, I learned that what I believed to be the first time she met up with him was a few days after our wedding, and she came home, and she and I had sex too, so basically she double dipped that night. Really messed up. That's why I feel like this is unforgivable, regardless of the special history of 7 plus years we have had together. Unfortunately, that will have to be a different memory for me, and now I need to move forward. It's not like she had a random encounter one night and made a bad decision under the influence or something, and came to me with regret and contrition. No, I caught her, and now I have to believe in myself and start my new life and reality without her. Our lease goes for a few more months, which will be tough, but I am going to look into one of our moving out early to start the separation process sooner. Anyway, thanks for reading and I appreciate your support. Never thought I would be in this situation, but life challenges us every day to be better and this is my time to rise above. OP, I am so sorry this has happened to you. Finding out a partner has had an affair can rock your world and be an emotionally devastating experience for you and your family. After all, 
is a betrayal of trust that can bring up a wealth of other concerns about your home life, your future, and your health. In the moment, it makes sense that you might be overcome with emotions. People can suddenly experience an array of feelings after discovering infidelity, including sadness, anger, shock, and disbelief. If your partner cheats, OP, it's hard to understand why they would do it, what you missed or how it was, but what you decide to do afterward is important. You're right when you say you have to do what's best for you. At the same time, far too often, people don't give themselves the space and time to simply be in the emotions and feel them. So take the time to feel the feels and let everything sink in. What would your initial thoughts be after finding out your significant other cheated? What actions would you be compelled to take? Let's see how the community would react. Starting with Dale at years 2019. Get it annulled and get out. It doesn't matter what excuse she gives. She lied to you for a long time. Just go. She isn't broken. DOP replies, thanks. We are going to look into annulment. Either way, I am out. You're right. She is broken and flawed. I see it now. Wish I had sooner, but I'll be okay. Thank you. Update. Five weeks since D-Day. Quick gratitude. Big ups to all the comments and DMs that were sent to me after my OP. Really helped me get through the a tough time. Still trudging along, but the initial perspective from the community was huge. Still in the middle of things, as you will read below. But otherwise I felt ready to write and post. TLDR is we are mostly separated already and I have reasons for optimism, but a tough journey ahead. Let's him do this. Sorry update. <laughs> Five weeks in, and it's felt like a year. Based on a number of factors, most covered in my OP, I decided pretty quickly that we should separate and divorce. Went back and forth on whether I could count on her to move out, or if I needed to just swallow the pill and take action myself. She had a friend, one of her confidants unsurprisingly, offer her to stay for a while. And, wayward spouse, cheater, kept offering early on to leave and give me space. So, I eventually took her up on it, around week two or so. She agreed, although she gave me some crap afterwards saying I kicked her out and all this nonsense, but she ended up staying with her that whole week and told me the Friday she was going to move in with her. I was a little surprised at first at how quickly that came together, but ultimately, I was cool with it because this was my plan A anyway. Whatever the case, it worked out this way and I'm not complaining. Granted, I will be solely on the hook for the last few months of the lease and rent, but I have thought about it and honestly, I see it as part of the cost of finality in the situation, so I've made peace with that. I might even have a roommate come into the picture soon, so then it's really not a setback at all. Anyway, not too high on my list of concerns right now. Well, she moved most of her stuff over the first few weeks of December. Would come over once or twice a week and take a carload or whatever. Those days sucked because she would needle me with irrelevant crap, basically blame shifting and trying to pad her own image and all this. I'm just sitting there doing my own thing because I work from home. So I'm like, can you just get your crap and go? We go into it once or twice because we just disagree over the whole situation and obviously emotions were peaking. She almost finished moving everything mid-December, but ended up having to leave a few things for after the holidays. She was flying home for 10 days or so. It was a little frustrating that she still has a reason to come over again and still has a key. But at least I could have some peace of mind while she was away. I'm also going to have the lease signed over to my name only, and she'll turn in her key. This is supposed to happen very soon. I am excited but anxious for that day, because I just want everything to go smoothly. I want to finish this all up. Be two totally separate lives. Then, pick up on the doors paperwork. I have completed some forms already, just want to have them reviewed before I start the process officially. Although there are still some things to figure out, I am counting my blessings that we never had kids. She is not pregnant, our finances are separate, and we don't have any pet or house to split. The kicker in all this is that I am still very emotionally damaged. I go from sadness one day to anger the next, to frustration and everything in between. The memories we had, the future we were planning for, all just gone to crap right now in front of me, unexpectedly. I hate that she did this. I have been summarizing it with people that I have three pieces of a pie going on right now. First piece, just knowing what I have to do, divorce and move on, because clearly our relationship is broken. The objective and business piece of the pie? Second piece is that I'm actually excited for life on my own. I have sort of fantasized about that in the past, knowing that we might not be best for one another. Things started to go sour past one, two years. Ups and downs, goods and bads, but the capacity for bads revealed itself. I loved her, sure, and enjoyed her company. But there was a laundry list of things we disagreed over and despised about one another. And I know I have a lot of life to live and things to offer to the world. So I've wondered in the past, what if I'm on my own way? And now I will have that chance. Granted, it was shoved in my face without the chance to fully decide this on my own, but the opportunity is in front of me nevertheless. 
The last piece of pie are my damaged feelings and emotions. This is the stinky piece of pie. I know it's normal to feel these things, and a lot of you have gone, are going to it. But man, does it suck. I am mentally okay, but my heart is broken. I am putting my faith in time, being active and connecting with people to be my medicines here. I am optimistic about the future, but still sick right now and feeling the symptoms. Last thing for now is that it amazes me how moved on she seems to be already. We don't talk or text to anymore outside of logistics, and of course, I don't know what she is actually thinking and feeling right now. Could be really tough for her too, but I guess I just expected a little more than apologize for a few days, start blame shifting for a couple of weeks, then move on with life. For example, she has been home with her family and friends over the holidays, and I wonder what the conversations have been like. We just had everyone at our wedding two months ago. What story are they getting? Big picture, I know that her people won't really matter for me in my future. Just stings a little over the holidays especially. Thanks for reading and being here to listen to my story. Hope everyone has a wonderful New Year's and many great things to come in 2022. Update. Six months since D-Day equals new life. Well, even as I write this title and dull check the calendar to be sure, I truly cannot believe half a year has passed since the day that changed my life. Thinking about where I was at that time, the week of, one month after, two months after, etc., I feel so grateful to simply be in the present, a safe and comfortable place consisting of freedom and a promising future. As I go back today and read my original post and initial update, I reminded of the slew of emotions I dealt with, anger, sadness, frustration, and devastation, to name a few. I had never felt so betrayed and alone in my life. Thankfully, I have an incredible circle of family and friends who were there for me and continue to play a huge part in my ongoing healing process. Right up there for me were the therapy sessions to help deal with the issues and carve a path forward, online forums to find strength in numbers and shared experiences. Thank you everyone for sharing your stories, books and articles, Tracy Shorn, I owe you my life, and new hobbies like yoga and meditation, which I will continue to practice for years to come. I now live with a friend who is going to a similar transition in a beautiful house in a part of the city I am thoroughly enjoying. I have single-handedly carried out the divorce process after countless hours of research, many court appointments and legal consultations, and completed paperwork. Lots of paperwork. But in a few weeks, I will hold in my hand the official certified divorce papers, which is another big step for me in regaining my true independence. I have largely already moved on from that other person. However, since kicking them out months ago, after all the uncertainty of what I would do, where I would live, and deciding who may or may not be part of my life any longer, I can see and feel all the pieces coming together to the point where I am hitting my stride and am genuinely excited to own my future and enjoy all the riches of life that lie ahead. While I do still experience passing dots to spot every day, the associated feelings and emotions have been significantly reduced to that of dealing with a housefly. I expect even those empty thoughts will become less frequent in time. Sometimes, especially as of late, I find myself amazed to realize that my memories and associations of my past life and relationship are fading away, blurring, and attaching themselves to my collective 30-year archive of memories and experiences. It's just another closed chapter along with the rest, a long and arduous section, no doubt, but I could not be happier to have moved on to the next part of my story. Thanks for listening, and I seriously wish you the best in both dealing with and overcoming your struggles. You are more resilient than you know. If you need help, ideas, resources, or just someone to talk to, please reach out. Hopefully, you find peace on the other side of all this. I am still healing, but I know things do happen for a reason, and I understand this had nothing to do with me. There is so much yet to experience and meaningful connections to be made. No part of this was fun, but I do believe that we, our community, become stronger people for it. Much love. B.S. I recently reached out to the Bear Partner Sid Mibbing and other to offer information. It is something I've felt compelled to do for a while, but honestly, I wanted to get this latter stage in the divorce process first before potentially throwing a wrench in all the legal work and security I was building for myself. <laughs> they all work together at the same school, after all. Soon to be ex-wife, accomplices, a fair partner, a fair partner, significant and other. Well, I finally reached out via email. A fair partner, significant and other initially showed interest in a phone call, and to my surprise, wrote back, I know who you are, and I know what this is about. But shortly after, she abruptly rang Nate and said, Never mind, I'm okay. I'm left to wonder what may have led her to change her mind so quickly. Maybe she talked to someone in between, and they told her not to go through with it. Or, she chose to stay with this person even after learning about the affair and is in denial. Or, it could be that she is just on her own healing journey and feels that a conversation could be a setback to the progress she has made. 
Regardless, I can now rest easy, knowing that I fulfilled my moral obligation by making an attempt. I can't force her to be willing to hear me out. It appears she at least has some knowledge of the situation based on her reply. And maybe there would have been more details and information that would have negatively affected me in my recovery anyway. I was a little curious as to what has gone on in the months past, being that I have cut off virtually all communication with soon-to-be ex-wife. However, I suppose it's back to the old mantra of, I know what I know, and what I know is enough. And I'm okay with that. Edit. Receiving a lot of feedback on my PS above, I appreciate this perspective and may consider further action. I know alerting the Sidovian and other is important, hence my premeditation and steps taken. However, I am conflicted on how far to go with it. I've learned boundaries are important, especially when dealing with emotional situations. The fact that she confirmed at least some extent of awareness may be enough for me here. There is absolutely no reason for her to otherwise know who I am, much less what my attempted communication is about. Her message implies gossip among school staff, which is not surprising or some might even say it's likely considering the circumstances. I also don't know how else to contact her besides her work email as I did. Short of going full private investigator and tracking down more her personal information, I don't want to do that and think it could be an invasion of privacy. She has my phone number and I invited her to contact me if she so chooses. Otherwise, it's a situation where I have limited control and I don't wish to exert much more energy, time, or focus to it. Again, thanks for the input. First off, OP, it's so nice to hear how far you've come and how much you've grown in the months following D-Day. Right after finding about a partner cheating, we can feel like we need to go straight into fix-it mode or make big decisions based on discovering the sexual infidelity. Rather than being reactive, it's important to be intentional and thoughtful. In terms of a fair partner's OP, there is no clear-cut right or wrong answer to this question, unfortunately. It can't be tempting to act on your own with the newfound information you've discovered. But you should first stop and think about how well you know these people in the situation. You may not have all the facts. The hurt they'll experience from your interference would likely be minimal compared to behind their back, the important thing is that you reached out and the ball is in their court now. They know you're there for them if need be. For now, rest well knowing that you've done your best and they have your support if they want it. We can't force people to want to hear what we have to say for our own benefit or closure. You've done all you can do. Time to focus on you. What are your thoughts? Would you let the fair partner subbing another know? Why or why not? In the community, it the not me says, hey, I don't know you, but I'm proud of you. I'm actually even a little envious of your ability to know and move forward with divorce, as it probably helped in the healing process to know this was the next step. However, that lack of accountability, blame shifting, and cheater narrative really is a kicker. It reminded me so much of my own frustrations. We kind of have a similar timeline between length of relationship and separation length, so it's kind of nice reading an update from someone going through a divorce as well who isn't projecting that they'll be absolutely broken for years to come like the divorce subreddit sometimes has. It's just validating and reassuring that people can and do improve their lives after, and it doesn't have to take endless years, which, if it does, is valid, but the idea of remaining in those feelings for so long is terrifying. Glad you're in a better place, and it's expected to keep getting better. Take care of your heart. One quick comment from the community from Rivers11. Thanks so much for sharing this. Today is five months after D-Day for me, and I'm better than I was a month ago. Happy to hear these positive stories. It gives those of us behind you some much-needed hope. Thank you, friend. Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let us know what you thought of today's content in the comments below. See you next time.